Hello students, welcome back to Edubedia Word videos. My topic for the presentation is last section of the chapter transport in plants. In this section of the video, we will be discussing about the water movement of a plant. Students, we looked at how plants absorb water from soil and move it into the vascular tissue. We now have to try and understand how this water it enters and how it is transported to various parts of a plant body. Is the water movement active or is it still passive since the water has to be moved up a stem against gravity? What provides the energy for this? Have you ever wondered? So let's see how it goes. Water and mineral ion, they move into the root along two pathways. We very well know that. Okay. So this is the root here. This is the uh, root system. Mineral ions and water molecule, they enter root here and they travel through the cell of a cortex by osmosis. See, from root here, all these mineral ions and water is uh, entering and it reaches to the cortex then it reaches to the endodermis pericycle and finally to the vascular system that is xylem okay so mineral ion and water molecule they enter root hair and they travel through the cell of a cortex by osmosis and water also flows between the cells of the cortex then nutrients dissolved in water can flow between parenchyma cells directly into root cortex and then through the cells of the endodermis, which is this. Okay. Now root pressure. As various ions from so soil, they are actively transported into the vascular tissues of a root. Water follows its potential gradient and increases the pressure inside the xylem and this positive pressure is called as root pressure and it can be responsible for pushing up water to a small height in the stem how can we see that root pressure exist you can choose a, a small soft stemmed plant and on a day when there is a plenty of atmospheric moisture just cut the stem horizontally near the base with the sharp blade early in the morning and you will soon see drops of solution ooze out of the cut stem this comes out due to positive root pressure and if you fix a rubber tube to the cut stem as a sleeve you can actually collect the measure and the rate of exudation and it also determine the composition of exudate so effect of root pressure it is also observable at night and in the early morning when evaporation is low and excess water collects in the form of droplets okay i hope it is clear to you and such water loss in its liquid phase is known as guttation now how does it maintains the pressure students uptake of a water by root here by osmosis takes place Uptake of dissolved minerals through active transport, cell sap within root hair, they become more concentrated than the water in the soil. See, this is the soil particle, this is the root hair, this is the film of the water. So, first step is that water enters root hairs by osmosis, okay, and then water passes across the root from cell to cell by osmosis from this cell to this cell, and from this cell to this cell or the adjacent cell. And this process goes on and on that water passes across the root from cell to cell by osmosis, and this region is called as cortex of root. And this is endodermis, and this is finally a conducting vessel which is xylem. So third step is when water is drawn up the xylem vessel because transpiration is constantly removing water from the top of them. So this because of root pressure you can say that uh, various ions are actively transported into the vascular tissue of the root and water follows its potential gradient and it increases the pressure inside the xylem and this positive pressure is called as root pressure and it is responsible for pushing up water to a small height in the stem okay 
So root pressure, it occurs when soil moisture level is high either at night or when transpiration is low during day or you can say in the early morning. It can only raise the water in some plants up to 20 meter. Not, it is not the main force. Okay. I repeat, root pressure is not the main force for moving the water up to a long distance in the stem. See, transpiration, evaporation, water evaporates from mesophyll into atmosphere and water molecules, they are pulled up the xylem by virtue of cohesion. Then comes capillarity, water climbs in the xylem cell wall by adhesion. I will be explaining you what cohesion and uh, adhesion is and water molecules they follow by cohesion the students cohesion you can say it is a mutual attraction between water molecules whereas adhesion you can say attraction of water molecule to a polar surface such as uh, surface of tracheary elements and then comes root pressure water moves into the root because of the solute from phloem pressure it just pushes the water up the stem see this is the water and the mineral which are present inside the ground this is the root system this is the root system these are the lateral roots this is the tap root system to be more precise this is the shoot system this is the node from where leaf emerges and distance between two nodes is internode this is the epigal bud which is present at the apex. This is the axillary bud which is present in the axile of a leaf. It is the branch. It is the leaf. And this is uh, the shoot system. And transpiration. Because of the transpiration, water is taken up to the height of a plant body. And translocation means uh, carbohydrate is formed in the leaf with the help of solar energy by the process known as photosynthesis. So from here it reaches to the other parts of a plant body to provide the nourishment. So this red sign or red arrow it is indicating the translocation and this blue arrow it is representing the transpiration. Transpiration is nothing you can say that uh, it creates the transpiration pull for absorption and transport of plants. It supplies water for photosynthesis. It transports mineral from the soil to all parts of a plant body. It cools leaf surfaces sometimes 10 to 15 degree by evaporative cooling. And it maintains the shape and the structure of the plant by keeping cells turgid. Okay. So this is how the significance of a transpiration is and it is the evaporative loss of water by plants. It occurs mainly through stomata in the leaf. Okay, And beside the loss of a water vapor in transpiration, exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide in the leaf also occurs through pores which is called as stomata which is present in the leaf. How does plant transport water upward against gravity? So the driving force is transpiration. Energy ultimately comes from sun. Evaporation from leaf, it creates a negative pressure potential. Then another driving force is cohesion and uh, xylem. Water column is held together by cohesion. It is a mutual, you can say, uh, attraction between water molecules. This, uh, this is a driving force. Okay, and addition to the cell wall, it keeps water column in place. So, addition is what you can say attraction of water molecule to polar surfaces, such as the surface of tracheal element. And water uptake from soil takes place, negative pressure potential is transferred to root cell, and water thus enters the root. So, you have learned that water is transported from root to the stem and the leaf. So, transpiration pull is a driving force which is a negative pressure building force. A second is uh, root pressure which is a positive pressure and capillarity it takes place in a small plants. So, two important factors of our water cohesion and addition. Cohesion is what? It is a mutual attraction between water molecules. Water molecules they tend to stick together so that is called as cohesion and then what is addition? Water molecules, they tend to stick to inside of the xylem. Addition, you can say attraction of water molecule to polar surface, such as surface of tracheary elements. 
Now, what is the difference between these two driving forces? One is transpiration and second is root pressure. So, transpiration is a passive diffusion which takes place from the leaf and it just cools off the entire plant body, sometimes 10 to 15 degrees by evaporative cooling. And uh, capillarity cohesive force uh, takes place here in this transpiration. The movement of fluid through xylem vessel is caused largely by transpiration. Now, what is root pressure? See this uh, blue arrow, it is representing active transport and this red arrow, it is uh, representing passive diffusion. Okay, so under some circumstances, internal fluid pressure, which is called as root pressure in the root of some plant, they cause this fluid to rise up through xylem vessel. Okay, or you can say that uh, root pressure is a positive pressure and it is responsible for pushing up water to a small height in the stem. Now we'll talk about the transpiration students. Transpiration, it is an evaporative loss of uh, water by plants. It occurs mainly through the stomata in the leaf. Beside the loss of uh, water vapor in transpiration, exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide in leaf also occurs through pores which is called as stomata. And normally stomata, they are open in daytime and they just close during the night time. So the immediate cause of the opening or closing of the stomata is a change in the turgidity of guard cells. And the inner wall of each guard cell towards the pore is thick and elastic. So the mesophyll cells in the leaf, they are covered with a thin layer of moisture which is essential for efficient gas exchange to occur. Some of this moisture, it evaporates into the intercellular spaces which diffuses through the stomata into a drier air. And water is pulled upward through osmosis. And the water way in which water moves from a high water potential to a lower water potential, it is called as transpiration steam. Now students, what are the environmental factors that affect transpiration? Obviously, there are four. First is light. Light, it just stimulates the stomata present in the leaf to open and that allows gases exchange for photosynthesis. And thus, transpiration increases. That means evaporative cooling will take place. Plant may lose more water during day and wilting. Then, Temperature. High temperature, it increases the rate of evaporation of water from spongy cells present in the leaf and thus it reduces air humidity so transpiration also increases. Now the third factor, environmental factor is humidity. Higher the humidity means higher water potential in the air. So a lower water potential gradient between leaf and air so less evaporation will take place that means less transpiration will take place when humidity is high in the atmosphere then the fourth factor is wind blow away saturated air from around stomata it replaces it with drier air so increasing the water potential gradient and increasing and thus increasing transpiration that means more blow away saturated area more will be the transpiration or evaporative cooling of the leaf. During the daytime, stomata of the leaves, they are open. But why? Photosynthesis, gas exchange such as carbon dioxide and oxygen. Water vapor also evaporate and thus this is the transpiration. Okay. Now higher the temperature, higher the air water capacity to hold moisture. So at 30 degrees Celsius, a leaf may trans transpire three times as fast as it does at 20 degrees Celsius. I hope you understood now. So these are the five factors that affect transpiration. Uh, we have mainly uh, studied about the four and those were wind speed, humidity, light intensity and temperature but the fifth factor is water supply too so when wind speed increases it increases the transpiration rate and when humidity increases it decreases transpiration rate when light intensity increases it just increases the transpiration rate and when temperature increases it increases transpiration rate too
and when water supply to a plant decreases it just decreases the transpiration rate so that it can save the water present uh, in the plant okay now what is photometer students photometer the rate at which plant take up water depends on the rate of transpiration the faster a plant transpires faster it takes up the water right so as you can see that this is the reservoir for adding water to the photometer and pushing air bubble back to the start and this is the plant which is uh, kept in a beaker and this is the graduated capillary tube and these are the air bubbles okay so uh, this way you can determine the rate at which plant take up water depends on the rate of transpiration faster a plant transpires the faster it takes up water now we'll talk about the capillary action students see uh, cohesion and uh, addition they play important role right so the attractive force or the mutual attraction between water molecules is called as cohesion and water coheres to each other via chemical bond called hydrogen bonds that holds the droplets of water together and the attractive force is called as addition which is present between two unlike materials and addition it causes water to stick to inside of the cell see this is the plant body and this is the addition that means these water molecules they are adhered with the tracheary element which is a xylem cell wall it is attached with it so this is addition it is showing addition and this is one water molecule this is another water molecule and they both are connected with each other uh, through chemical bond and that is called as cohesion so they are mutually attracted towards uh, water molecules okay so addition causes water to stick to the inside of a glass when water passes up the thin xylem vessel it adheres to the surface of the vessel while force of osmosis gently pushes the water molecule which cohere to each other upwards okay see this is the zoom view uh, this is a xylem cell wall or tracheary element this is the water molecule which is completely adhered with the tracheary element this is another uh, water molecule which is attached with this water molecule via chemical bond and this is showing cohesion okay so forces that promotes uptake of water is first is root pressure which is a positive pressure transpiration pull which is a negative pressure and capillary action that push, pushes the water upward due to addition between the cells wall of the xylem vessel and water molecules as well as cohesion between the water molecule okay so they all promote uptake of water and they are main driving forces that help in uh, promoting the uptake of water in the plant body see this is the leaf from where transpiration takes place in the form of evaporative cooling this is the suction pressure that drives uh, water upside and water and minerals they are absorbed by the root hairs and by capillary action they are suck upside you can say okay it, it pushes the water upward due to the adhesion between the walls of a xylem vessel and water molecule as well as cohesion between the water molecules so three forces are responsible for promotion or for promoting the uptake of water in the plant body and that was all about it thank you and stay tuned